Howdy y'all, welcome back, glad you're here. So, I'm continuing my animated project that I started out as a sketch in Procreate. And if you want to follow the mini-series of this project, I highly recommend you check out some of my other videos if you feel inclined. So, yeah, after I made this illustration, I felt pretty good. And I had the idea to, you know, get her out of the void. Because, as I've kind of noticed, sometimes I tend to put my characters in this blank area or something, and I wanted to break that habit. And I still struggle with, like, a lot of perspective issues and background composition, so I wanted to still include her, like, in a background, but have it be something that I know I can, like, confidently do, and I wanted to add, like, you know, that this isn't me, like, <laughs> trying to find, like, a cop-out. I wanted this to be, like, a very chill, like, kind of drawing, you know what I mean? I wasn't looking to, like, explore or improve my skill. I was still exploring Clip Studio, so if it sounds like a cop-out, it's not. It's just, it's just the chill drawing. Uh, but I do want to improve my background design and skills. Like I said, it wasn't the time or place, but don't worry. That lesson is coming soon. But anyways, yeah, I wanted to have her with a backdrop, and I wanted the backdrop to also have a bit of storytelling and life to it as well. And since I switched the theme to fire instead of electricity, I feel like it would be a nice compliment to the dress that she's wearing and the lightsaber that she's wielding and I thought it would be cool if she had like kind of like a lava rock backdrop that would be like breathing or pulsing with like embers coming out of it here and there. So I did exactly what you should almost never do when you're not entirely confident about something and I didn't do any research or reference. <laughs> As you guys can see I spent about an hour working on this first backdrop. I wanted it to look like you know, like these cracks that you see in the desert and like really dry places and like the cracks that you would, you know, see in like lava rock, I guess. And I had a really good mental image of what I wanted, but my execution was like super poor and lacking. And as you can see, I kind of made like a basic outline of how I wanted the plates to look. And they were basically just gigantic lightning bolts that went across the canvas and they really weren't looking too good. But I kept on keeping on hoping that it was just in that ugly phase and that it would just get better. Spoiler alert, it didn't. But I continued on, and to be honest, looking back at this and my approach was weird. I made a layer where I just filled it with like a light black, and then I started putting in the lines with the eraser tool so that I could have the colors on a separate layer when I export, but that was not a good idea in hindsight. I did open up the experience to play around with the gradient tool, which by the way is fantastic. There's one small thing that I don't like, which is that when I use different colors for the gradient tool, I kind of expect it to change in the little preview menu, like in Photoshop, but it seemed to not do that, which was a little weird. But aside from that, I do think I still have like a really, it's still like a really great tool by all means. And as I started wrapping it up, I felt like I was close to finishing the backdrop and I started playing with glow effects and making it look like it had a vibrance and sense of heat to it. But ultimately, I ended up with something like this. Yeah, not the best. <laughs> and then after all the time I spent on this, I felt like just Googling an image and then using that as the backdrop. Not too proud of that moment. <laughs> so I took a break and decided to come back to it the next day. After the next day, I did what I should have done in the first place and started looking up references and YouTube videos to see if I can find anything to kind of like piece together what I'm looking for. And I actually found this really cool video on YouTube on how to draw lava rocks and I gathered some more references and again, I should have done that in the, I don't know, I should have done that in the first place. And it was so funny because then it's like almost as if something magical went off in my brain and all of a sudden everything just made more sense and I was able to make the plates and the cracks and the backdrop look like how I wanted them to look. <laughs> it's almost like doing the thing I should have done would have worked. <laughs> and um, I think this is where I had a lot of fun experimenting with the brushes and trying to figure out where and how I could use the different tools and blending options to make this look a teeny bit more realistic. Then, step by step, I had the video beside me and I kept referencing all the colors that the person was using and I was noticing that he's, or well they, maybe. <laughs> it, uh, the video started off with red and then gradually built up layer by layer into a brighter yellow. 
I used texture brushes or tools I should say and I actually didn't want to blend it in too much because I thought it would look nicer if I kept that texture inside. Um, I then duplicated the layer where I had all my strokes and then changed the blending mode and added some hints with like a larger soft brush to give it more of a glow. And yeah, I also made sure that these were not on too many layers so that when I export them, it would be easier to rearrange them in After Effects. And thankfully when I exported, it only came down to four layers, which were my character layer, the background, the exposed lava, and the glow layer. I exported them all to PNGs, transparent PNGs, mind you. I, I didn't add like a background or anything. And uh, oh yeah, and that's one last thing I wanted to mention about Clip Studio, which is that exporting is so amazing. When I'm at work, some of the programs that I use can be really stingy with their export options. And I think Clip Studio has like a very neat and like, what's the word? It's like, they have like a clean AI or no. Whoa, 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 <laughs> my bad. They have like a clean UI, a user interface when it comes to the export menu. It's very readable. I like all the options that are there. I also like that I don't have to go to like file export which I do think there is that option, but you know, it's like, it's it's nice to have it like located on the top shelf. I don't know what it's called, but having that top area of my workspace and like having those like export options at the top area of the workspace is just so much easier and quicker, I think. And yeah, that's my completed poster design and my first like intense illustration that I've done with Clip Studio Paint. I'm really happy with how this came out and using Clip Studio has been a pretty good experience. I cannot get over how much better making art is in this program and like how it feels. And I'm hoping to try out some more features as time goes on. And now that I've completed this poster, stay tuned for next week's vid where I'll show you how to composite the scene in Adobe After Effects. I'm gonna show y'all how to make this stagnant image move just a tiny bit to give it some more life and attention and storytelling. So stick around for that because it's gonna be rad. <laughs> And uh, thanks for sticking around. Like, sub, hit the bell, and uh, yeah, thanks for being here. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, homies. Have a good one.